Hi, this is Johos Subtilhatia, and we are here at Open Source Summit in Dublin. And today we have with us Philip Emmon, Chair of Elisa Automotive Working Group and Systems Working Group. It's great to have you on the show. Thanks a lot. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Uh, so first of all, let's start with the basics, which is uh, tell us a bit about the project. Yeah. So the Elisa project is a three years old project now, and Elisa stands for Enabling Linux in Safety Applications, which basically means that we have a lot of industries and they all make use of Linux and have a certain safety claim or not yet, but a lot of systems which are safety relevant and which include Linux elements. And the mission which we are taking in the Elisa part is that we see how we can work together to uh, put in elements, processes, tools, right, building blocks for these kind of systems and then help industry integrators and others to really find a way which is an amenable to safety certification for the yeah the Linux systems which you build with safety criticality in mind. So it's really something which is filling a good bridge in many projects which we have already in the Linux Foundation. And it's giving the safety pass in there next to security, which is a different topic. Yeah. When you talk about the the uh, security of automotive now, once again, that becomes complicated because at one point we look at the traditional cars. I don't like to call them ICE cars, you know, yeah. internal combustion, I, traditional cars. And then we have the, not only, not all EVs are, you know, smart EVs, you know, Tesla, they're working on different right. set of plots. So when we talk about security, we are looking at two different set, sets of security. Yeah. One security is just security of the vehicle itself, you know, and all the accident. Right. And the second is, you know, when you're looking at more and more self-driving, security means different things. Exactly. So what is the scope of the project and how do yeah. you see yourself with the evolution of EV automotive yeah, yeah. market? Exactly, so it's, um, the, the self-driving part is more the challenging one which we are approaching here. Um, actually, in the automotive, we are not focusing on a self-driving use case. We go for a use case which is more traditional with clusters and so on, but um, it basically has the elements which are needed and which claims are put to an operating system. And here it goes for, when you say security, more in this safety path, functional safety. That means there should not be a harm to the person, to the people, to the car, around you, the environment. And this gives the difference to what I say with traditional security, because there are a lot of security things which just make prevent that data is secure, that there is no intrusion attacks, denial of service, and so on. This, of course, is important for a safety system as well, but um, it also there is an additional factor, like when you isolate security things, you, you look into certain modules, but for safety you have to think about the whole, because just if one little element is considered to be safe, it's not free from interference, it could be attacks from also which you don't imagine, so you have to really consider a whole as a system, which is often also called an item, and this is where products exist. And this is actually independent of the business area. You brought it up quite well. We see connection, uh, everything get connected, get more complex, centralized, and so on. This is really the element. Uh, I also want to talk to you something about, you know, we, we talk, we kind of put a lot of words together, privacy, security, safety. Can you also make it sure when we talk about the automotive, you know, or in specific uh, regions or countries, just to be clear that safety versus security, what is the difference? And once again, what is the scope of the project? Right, yeah, it's a good point because um, if you talk about security, this gives uh, data privacy, which are strong, for example, in the European region where you have to make sure a lot of things are followed from the regulations, data privacy, and so on. And the second security part would be to have uh, like no intrusion or whatever and have denial of service attack, what we have really currently seeing a lot of events. But this is what the project is not about. It's about safety for the human body, for the environment that you reach your goal when you take in a car and especially in this movement with more and more driving assistance, rear view camera come respond, uh, that need to be put into the car, so they are a demand, their park distance control, interior monitoring systems, and all these kind of things to make sure you're safe when you're driving and nothing happened to you. This is the scope of the Elisa project automotive work group. So we see here is this functionality which should prevent harm or loss to the physical body. Can you also talk a bit about when we look at, you know, either we look at the traditional cars <laughs> yeah. or we look at, you know, let's say self-driving kind of cars, 
how much do you see the safety aspect actually different or it's actually same because in some ways, just the, because someone else is making decision that the computer, you know, at more advanced computer versus less advanced computer. So talk about that. Yeah, there is a strong difference actually because uh, what we see is that there is a tendency to have a software defined vehicle. So more in the past, there were many, many units. So a lot of little body device embed control units which are spread around in the car and they are getting more centralized. So it's getting more computation power, which is needed also for all these camera sensors, which getting fusion, sensor fusion that bring all these things together. And here comes the point also for Linux, because there are a lot of libraries available, a lot of tools which have been not used in the past, it was simply RTOS or bare metal programming. And suddenly they are put into large complex computation, desktop PC style, computation performance and this is new for the whole industry and also the standards around this were not really made for these kind of elements so it's really growing all together and suddenly a lot of very experts also in safety see new challenges new complexity and on the other hand we have certain complexity managed in Linux but we have never been confronted with all these demands on on safety and here it's really where Elisa comes into the picture, comes into the game, and bring things together. So that's really the work which we have. And um, because you gave this from the traditional car to the new one, um, well, you could imagine if you drive a car, you have seen maybe these warning lights, like check engine sync, or uh, which gear you use. And this has been light bulbs. They turned into LEDs. But nowadays, if you see a fancy car, it's fully integrated into the display. The display gets rendered by graphics processing using the GPU. and this needs to be made safe. It has to be there because you need to know if something is wrong with your engine and that you get it in time. And this is something which we took as use case, for example, in the Elisa work group for uh, automotive. So say, let's look into this element because it's really a nice visualization of things. Can you also talk about the whole structure of the project? Because there are so many different groups within the project itself, so that we better understand you know, what you folks are doing there. Yeah. So. Um, I said already, we have certain processes, elements, tools, and you can see similar as we touched security. In security, there are known capabilities, uh, like C groups, namespace, whatever we do. And we have one group which just focuses on which features could get in. But these little features will not make your system safe. And there's a lot of compliance to processes, or how the development process looks like, reviews, traceability. So we have another group which also focuses on having an open source engineering process so that the process, which is done in open source, get root also how you can mesh it to safety demands, which safety integrity standards like ISO and IC standards ask for, have fulfilled this. And this is so another element. Then we need to improve the quality of the kernel. So we do fuzzy testing, and this is done with tool, invest tool investigation group. And with these three elements, they are we are fed with the use cases. So we have the automotive use case, which I'm representing. And then there's also medical devices group, which is working with open APS project, also an open source project together. And we give the requirements also to different groups and we get support by the architecture work group. I haven't mentioned this, but they really look into kernel subsystems and see how this the influence of the kernel comes much stronger into the use cases. And yeah, then there is a quite new group on the systems, systems work group. Here we are not so deep into the safety element of it, but we see that different work groups need to get the work together, right? You need to see some or and experience what we do. And this goes then into the system, which is looking for a fully automated reproducible reference system where you can come to real world architecture because a system will not be only on on, on Linux, it will include other OS, maybe container technology involved, hypervisor virtualization technology, real-time OS next to it. And this is across industries. You see repeating architectures. And this is touched with the systems work group. And this is, is basically the frame how we tie things together so that you have something for long-term visibility. How should use cases evolve? Have a processing landscape, get certain tools which enhance functionality and then have spotlights on certain elements. We know it's not complete, it needs to get more, right? There's um, 
the kernel work with user space, glibc, and other parts. So we need to grow on this, but we started on the kernel called the kernel as a fundamental element, which does a scheduling, memory management, and so on. So it's where we look a lot from the working groups. Excellent. Um, I also want to talk a bit about if you look at the automotive industry, it's a diverse industry. It's not just you know within you know Germany. You have yeah. like so many awesome you know uh, companies there, global. Uh, when it comes to adoption of these technologies, how much is standardization you're seeing there? Or you still see there is some fragmentation? Or in general, if you do look at that, what are the challenges that you do see are there to kind of make sure that everybody is on the same you know, playing, playing field? Yeah, I, I see that um, there is still a diverse market. We have already some projects which bring different manufacturers, for example, together we have the automotive grade Linux, which is part of our use case. We took the automotive grade Linux platform into the ELISA. And um, there are also currently great initiatives. So um, from some of our members, they're driving activities. So um, towards more public visibility of safety of the usage of Linux. And you see also outside of the LF, large initiatives like software defined vehicles. So where we also contribute in as members from ELISA and try to also interact with them because they really bring a large market and actually from Edge to the cloud. So there are also AWS, Microsoft, other large partners, and there's this really a bunch which go into this business, which are not the traditional automotive, right? They are really from another industry sector. And um, here you see the cooperation, the consolidation on it. And you actually also see a lot of similar, even if it's a diverse project landscape, you see repeating companies and it's a large set. So that maybe there's also more consolidation over time. And we try at least to establish the communication from the systems work group between these different projects. So there's something where we just try to tie things together. Uh, if you just look at the kind of the history of the project, tell us a bit about some of the milestones that you are proud of when you look back at them or from the point of, hey, this is what we have achieved so far. I think one, one good thing was um, that we figured out important elements that we have different safety standards and we were taking a long time to figure out what could be the best safety standard on all. But in the end, at some point, we reached the situation that we see there's a lot of similarities. They need the same things, reviewing processes, traceability. And we see that this is one very important branch, but this issue on safety standards need to get into Linux. And we had um, a good set in alignment of use cases to um, really reach out to the people, the communities in there. And we put this into white paper documentation. So the technical strategy is available as a white paper. And um, from the automotive, it was really nice that we could use a reference. And we had a first sample implementation. It was not safe, but it was a use case which we could just show and derive elements to it. Then a good milestone was also the part on the SDPA analysis, systems theoretic process analysis. It's something which is a fairly new technology, but it's getting widely used in this context because you can illustrate things a lot and just driving things forward. And yeah, really milestones were also foundation when we reached the critical mass for new working groups, like for the system, the so OSEP, other sorts of features, next features group group. These were always quite milestones because it settles down the different elements which we need, the pillars of the project to come to success. But it's still also worth to mention, it's a longer way which we still have for the way forward. What are things in the pipeline? Of course, there are certain things that you can share, but it's an open source project. Everything is out there. But you know, if you have a better pulse of the community and the project. So talk a bit about that. Yeah, so um, I mean, the focus on the automotive and systems work group for sure. Um, I cannot speak for all work groups, but we see that um, we for work in the automotive work group, which was quite generic. So basically, our concept are not limited to Linux. You can put it to any OS and create your system architecture on it. But now, we are in a stage where we have the architecture work group and we bring these two worlds together. So it's something where we really align. They come from a kernel perspective, it's much stronger. We put away the US for some time to just make a clear concept. So this is something where things get together now. That's something coming up in the next months. Um, we reach out to other communities again. So interaction with the Autosar consortium is something where we want to enhance because they have safety activities as well. We go into um, then as I said, SDV, Sophie, because they share this architecture, we align with AGL, most likely need to illustrate them also stronger how safety from ELISA can help the AGL and their 
uh, growing use case and really, really concrete from the systems work group. I think this is a nice thing. Quite a good demo, which was done from the Xen project with Stefano Stabellini, and he showed the demo during OSSNA. And this was a good showcase. And we want to get this showcase forward. So we're currently making this fully automated that you can have the tools. We will bring this into um, Yocto, and we have another tool called Morlin. It's a meta build tooling so that you experience this with the good documentation. So the idea is that you can really cut out elements from it. So you take one element out and another element in. And then our goal is to have this line with the S form because we know that software bill of material is really gaining momentum with a lot of activities out there. And um, so here we see that we need to generate a full system S form. And this is something which people typically do. They have the elements, but they generate some part here and there, and we try to bring this together so that you can have the full system stack, which you need maybe beside the cloud part, right? We currently don't have the cloud, including the build layer, separate from the product cloud, but this is together. And here I'm really proud that we actually have a spin-off to the SPDX. So there's a new, uh, how is it called? Functional Safety Special Interest Group in the SPDX. And this was created after initial discussions which we had in the systems work group and figured, well, this is very important. It has, needs a larger forum. So we spin this off and showed this nice collaboration with other communities. So that we only collaborate with the XAN community. We have Sapphire involved. We have Yocto project in and also the SPDX project. And so we really form an umbrella for different activities and all have touch points to safety. And I guess there's no, no place to meet in the systems work group. Other than the, the hats that you wear in the project, you are also at Bosch. So first of all, tell us, what do you do at Bosch? Yeah, right. We are in uh, projects. Currently, I, I joined Bosch just in April this year. I've been with a daughter company, a smaller one, for many, many years in automotive. And we target a project because we saw the architecture, as I described. They're very similar all over industries. So we try to bring our invest, which we already have in Linux, to widen the different use cases and go into industrial building power tools and all these different business units which exist in Bosch and see how the Linux works into it. And this was also one reason why I said we move into Elisa. So we joined Elisa for the safety part for the system composition and systems work group. And Bosch also joined the civil infrastructure platform project because um, the Linux long lasting, long term, su long term support maintainability is a very crucial element in here. And third pillar, which we took for us, we just talked about it, the ASPOM March. So we also became an SPDX member. And by this, we started our three activities just now with the launch of the LF EU. And we said, this is a good start so that we can bring efforts, can bring engineers exactly in this safety part, systems build up, long-term support, maintainability, that the systems are having long lifetimes, getting connected, and then all being compliant also and finding ways how to identify vulnerabilities easy and do this jointly. And as we said, we don't want to have this only inside Bosch. We said we go the step outside. Let's look for partners because it's, we all share the same burden. We all have the same challenges. And that's why it's important to speak outside, speak to the people and get a forum on this. And this is basically also the role and the mission which I'm taking in this project to reach out to more people and bringing our interests forward and do work together. Philip, thank you so much for taking time out today. And uh, talk about the, the project also. As, you know, we talked about how the automotive industry is evolving and how the project is uh, helping. Then also talk about Bosch's involvement in the project. And, uh, uh, and this is beauty of a Linux Foundation that there are so many projects uh, where it also enables a lot of you know uh, folks to get involved with the project that they see value in. At the same time, it's like, cross-pollination, where you also share the ideas from one project to others, so it makes everybody better. So that's so awesome there. But I really appreciate your time and your insights today, and I would love to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. It was a pleasure to talk to you. So very nice to meet you. Thank you.